Welcome to the Quantum Alignment Q&A, Humboldt series, where we traverse through an array of healing modalities to educate, empower, and excite our listeners on their path of holistic health and wellness. In sharing various practitioners' experiences and insight, we hope to cultivate a deeper relationship between one's true self, the mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional bodies. Join naturopath, transpersonal psychologist, and cannabis therapy consultant, Dr. Pepper Hernandez, in the Humboldt Quantum Alignment Series. And now, here is your host, Dr. Pepper Hernandez. Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you so much for taking time to be present with us today. Our intention for this podcast is for each and every one of us to get one step closer to the highest version of our aligned self each and every day, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual components. Today, we have a very special guest, a woman who I just adore. Her name is Carrie Green. She is the owner of Spiral Life Wellness. She's a massage therapist, a body work instructor, a cancer survivor, and today, she is going to be speaking with us on cannabis microdosing and so much more. Hi, Carrie. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased to be here. It's, uh, it's very exciting, and I, I feel the same about you, Pepper. Uh, you, you do amazing things for the community, and uh, you know, um, I, I consider you a dear friend. Oh, I just, I just absolutely love and adore you so much. So the reason why I wanted to have you on this show, particularly, well, you and I both spoke um, back at the, I think it was the Women's Conference for the Redwood Women's Foundation. Yeah, yeah. the International Women's Day. Yeah, we were both nominated. Congratulations, by the way. You and too. This idea of us having you on the podcast, speaking of microdosing, it kind of came out of that. But there mm -hmm. is so much more I want to talk with you about and so much more I want to share with our audience today. So let's just begin with, and, and we'll get into everything, but let's just start with what your healing modality is and kind of how you began. Sure, sure. I'm happy to share that. Well, I've been um, a massage therapist, body worker for uh, 33 years now. Hard to believe. <laughs> over, yeah, over half my life. <laughs> um, and I came into it um, when I was a child. I would, uh, um, my parents asked me to walk on their backs and massage their feet. And so it was definitely a way of expressing love and, uh, um, and getting um, feedback, you know, and so, and I found throughout my teenage years, I would rub friends' shoulders and things like that. And then when I was 21, um, I had a friend uh, say to me, you know, you should really go to school for this. And um, I said, you know, that's not a bad idea. Um, I was waiting tables at the time. I knew that that wasn't going to be something I was going to be doing forever. Um, and so um, in 1987, I attended the uh, Wellspring School of Massage in Morro Bay, California. And uh, it's no longer there, but uh, always will be in my heart. Uh, it was held in a little chapel with stained glass windows. It was just a beautiful uh, experience to, to begin with. And throughout the years, I've uh, done more training. Um, and uh, I have thousands of hours of, of, of training and experience. Um, I've done medical massage. I have uh, uh, done workshops. Um, I, um, my current passion is, is teaching and passing it on to the next generation. And so, um, and I, I love doing uh, the lighter therapies now, cranial sacral therapy and lymph uh, drainage therapy. So, um, and then I also uh, am do energy work, uh, Jacob and Reiki, which um, I had started out 26 years ago doing a Western Reiki. Um, 
And then I just discovered uh, Jacobin through my teacher here in McKinleyville, Casalia Denise Payne Olivier. And Jacobin is a uh, Reiki that stayed in Japan up until about 10 or 15 years ago. And it comes from the source. Um, uh, the uh, man who discovered Reiki, um, Yus Dr. Yasui, taught his uh, principal student, uh, Hayashi. And uh, Dr. Hayashi uh, taught uh, his niece, and that is how the lineage has been passed down. So um, I, I love sharing that as well. Oh, so many beautiful things. And at the spiral, um, what are you doing there? Because you are just shifting and moving all the time. There's so many things happening. But what's your main focus there? Well, at Spirals of Life Wellness, um, I do um, a lot of uh, um, hands-on, well, I was doing a lot of hands-on uh, modalities uh, prior to uh, the shelter in place. And I uh, also teach um, community classes and professional massage classes as well. Um, and then we've had women's circles and sound healings and anything, um, we're about empowerment and so, I really, anything that's empowering for, um, for the community and particularly women, um, I, I, love, I love empowering other women. <laughs> of course, of course. And you're very good at it. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> yeah, so where were you? And now for those, for our audience, you're in Humboldt County and that's yes. where the Spirals of Life Center is as well. It's in McKinleyville. In McKinleyville. Um, Mm -hmm. Just north of Eureka um, and Arcata um, in Humboldt County. Okay, wonderful. Where were you before you were in this community or have you always been here? I came to this community 16 years ago and um, prior to that I was in the Mount Shasta area for five years and I love love Mount Shasta too, yes. Oh, that is my jam. You are speaking my language. I love <laughs> Mount Shasta. There's just something very, very special about that place. Yes, I, I fully agree. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I find that I've lived in places that are energy vortexes. Um, Mount Shasta being one, um, this area being another. I've lived in Ashland, Oregon, uh, where I also attended um, trainings there, um, and Seattle, Washington. And so I find that I get shifted around when the energy shifts for, for me and for my family. And so we, um, we were in Mount Shasta for five years, and um, it just felt like it was time to uh, move on and we discovered Humboldt County or rediscovered so right <laughs> okay so this is going a little bit off our format but I have to ask you this question because okay. a lot of these interviews are super intuitive anyhow but sure. was there anything that happened while you lived at Mount Shasta that was just one of those outrageous stories everybody's got them you know oh, everybody's yeah. got magical stories about Shasta, but not to put you on the spot, but was there one that you want to share with our audience or not? That's okay too. Uh, well, I'm just, uh, I, yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely a, a few that come to mind, but, um, definitely during, um, during a full moon in August, uh, when the moon is pretty much at its at at its fullest, um, on top of the mountain, doing a um, a, a drum circle um, was just such a, a powerful. Um, it just felt like it wasn't just the people that were in the circle; it was um, just all of the energies around. And uh, you know, I um, I definitely discovered a lot of of different um, spiritual pathways and and friends and um, and then the nature there is just incredible. So you know, just taking all of that in too. But yeah, yeah, really powerful experience there. Thank you for sharing that with me. I love Mount Shasta. I mean, if anyone who's listened to the podcast 
or anything, anytime I talk about Mount Shasta, I'm always really, you know, intrigued by the type of connection that people with have with Telos and that alien or energetic community that's there. Sure. Uh, so I'm <laughs> always, I'm always fascinated. I, I read all those books and I go there and I'm doing all these things. So I'm always interested to ask if anyone's really familiar with Mount Shasta, if they know or have <laughs> stories about that specifically. But so can you tell what, tell our audience what most people are coming to you for as far as gu guidance is concerned? Hmm. Well, um, I find that uh, people come to me uh, to, um, to help with, uh, with pain relief, both physical and emotional. And um, I'm very good at holding space in a, in a very non-judgmental, um, loving, compassionate way so that people can feel comfortable um, and listened to and seen. And then um, because of the mind-body connection, um, I find that if they are at ease and in a relaxed state, then um, it facilitates them uh, being able to let go of pain. I also uh, trained um, and worked with a local uh, osteopathic physician, Dr. Kate McCaffrey, for about 10 years. And so I, um, I have learned a lot of osteopathic techniques that I can utilize with people and show them, uh, empower them to help themselves as well and, and stay healthy in between sessions. Great. And I love Dr. McCaffrey, by the way. So she's just a sweetheart. Uh, you know, you spoke about the physical emotion, mind, body connection. We have listeners from all over the world where that terminology may be new to them. Now, we live and breathe it, you and I, and, and the healers here in our community that are saturated by this concept. But for those people where this is new for them, can you kind of touch on that a little more? Sure, sure. Well, um, so our, our bodies... Um, are you know made up of uh of these sentient cells you know like each of our cells almost has its own its own ability to um to make decisions and to and of course they they want to for our greater good and so a lot of times however as people um you know, come out of uh, um, maybe traumatic birth experience or have trauma in their life or have received an injury or things like that. The body is um, kind of like a sponge and it can hold that energy. And there's usually a, um, oh, a, an emotional, an emotion, a strong emotion associated with uh, pain or trauma or things like that. And that can just get locked in the body. And uh, um, often um, when people experience that, they kind of catch their breath and, and that kind of locks it into the tissue. And so as uh, things are releasing, I, I also do myofascial release, and that's an unwinding technique that um, physically unwinds that pattern, but a lot of times emotion can, can be released with that. And um, so we just, uh, you know, we're, we're a complete package, and these um, emotions can be in our body and um and the more we release and free up and uh and come to terms with um the things that you know did did or did not happen or that we're holding and uh it creates more healing and more more light more energy and a better quality of life i love that thank you you explained it so very well thank you what do you think about breath work then? Because you're, you're speaking or what I'm hearing you say is that those emotions are trapped in the body, then they become physical. 
So if they can do that by trapping, breathing in, how could breath work be a part of it? And I know you're, you know, maybe not suggesting that specifically, there's other things, but just, you know, speaking oh, yeah. on that. Yeah, well, um, I, you know, I, I, I had not even really, uh, I, I mean, it's so natural for me to get people to be in tune with their breath, to take it way down. Oh, so many people don't breathe all the way through their diaphragm and down into their, uh, their lower uh, um abdomen area um and you know we we can hold a lot in in our in our stomach and our abdomen as well as our lungs um one of my favorite authors louise hay uh speaks about that yeah i know she's yes. definitely one of my <laughs> go-to's um but she talks about that those connections and how those particular emotions can be associated with the body and so I just get people to just even start breathing um, and uh, just allowing that. Um, and then sound. Um, I, I find such powerful healing with, with sound as well. So um, I, I just create an environment for people to be able to breathe and make sounds if they need to, or sometimes I'll tone with them if I'm feeling uh, called and, um, or if they're comfortable with it. So um, yeah, breath, body, mind, all of it, all together. Wonderful. Can you expand on sound, for example? Ooh. Because when you sound sound, my mind goes into a whole bunch of things because I, I love holistic health and healing, but someone else may be thinking music or mantra. Can you expand sound and what that looks like for you and things that you do? Because I feel like that would be very interesting. Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. So, um, well, I love uh, different instruments that, that make um, uh, sounds like uh, Tibetan singing bowls and chimes and gongs, and uh, they all have a certain resonance. And then our voice does as well. And so um, I, love, I love to sing, and uh, um, kirtan and, and mantras are, are lovely as well. And so I think as far as uh, sound, it's whatever is, um, it's individual. So whatever really um, creates a state of peace and balance in that individual, um, you know, it, it, there's, there's a myriad of choices, definitely. I love that. Expanding on that statement, peace and balance, which is just so comforting and so comfortable. Tell me a little bit about your personal journey to guide yourself to peace and balance. Because I know you personally, I've been in the community about a decade, and I, I know you to be a cancer survivor. So I'd love to go into that story, what you'd like to share with us. And sure. then I'd like to go um, into some topics about cannabis, but can we just start there? Because I know they intermingle. That's why I mentioned both of them. Definitely, definitely they intermingle. Well, six years ago, I um, was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and I was, um, it was a very rare form of ovarian cancer. Only 5% of all uh, ovarian cancers are clear cell carcinoma. Uh, I was very fortunate in that we caught it in stage one um, or 1B. Um, what had happened for me is that in 2014, I in January, I started to feel fatigued, um, bloated, uh, um, just not myself. I knew something was up and I thought maybe I was going into menopause or, um, you know, I was around that age. And so I, for, for a month, I was kind of in, in denial and just, uh, you know, tried to exercise harder. I went to see my, I didn't go to see my doctor until the end of the month, but um, I, you know, uh, did, did some fasting and uh, did some, um, 
some meditation and just kind of tried to like figure it out. And I couldn't figure it out on my own. So I went to see my primary care physician and she ran a blood test and found that my uh, protein markers uh, were elevated. And so I, um, between January of 2014 and April of 2014, I grew two tumors on both my ovaries um, that were nine and 15 centimeters. And I looked pregnant. Um, it was really bizarre. Um, and it was at that time um, because I didn't know that uh, the tumors were, uh, were cancerous until after I had um, a full hysterectomy and, and tumor removal in um, April of 2014. And then I got home from the hospital, a uh, wonderful hospital too in uh, Redwood City, uh, Sequoia Hospital, great, great people. Um, but I got home from there and my uh, surgeon called me and told me that they had found cancer on my tumors and what it was. And uh, she then gave me a choice and said, you know, um, I recommend that you do six rounds of chemotherapy. And if you do, um, I will give you a 90% guarantee that you'll be cancer free when this is over. So for about 48 hours, I... Um, kicked and screamed and cried and, uh, you know, just talked to family members and made the decision that um, I was going to go ahead and do the medical route. And on the other side of it, I was going to do everything I could alternatively to, uh, to make the best outcome. And as a result, um, especially with the, the cannabis that I put on board with my, um, I, cut, I went into a vegan diet, mostly raw, um, no sugar, uh, no dairy, just really, really clean, clear, kept my thoughts really clean and clear, um, and did uh, uh, Reiki on myself uh, daily. And with the cannabis, um, I was able to start regenerating white blood cells, new fresh cells, uh, during chemo and that was uh my doctors were pretty amazed <laughs> so i feel like i um even though i would have loved to have done just a fully natural protocol uh because of the aggressiveness uh of the tumors and the fact that my doctor said 90%, um, I decided to, to make the bridge between uh, allopathic Western medicine and all of that and everything I have learned uh, in my years uh, in holistic health. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I love that you share, or you said, making that bridge between because I think maybe at least the people I've spoke with and maybe our audience can resonate with this, but I think a lot of people think it's either alternative or it's allopathic. You can only go one of those two routes. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a practitioner um, and someone who's also gone through a cancer scare, I think the combination is lovely when you can find primary care and healers around that work together synergistically. So I agree. thank you for bringing that up because that's a very, very great point that you're bringing to this discussion. Thanks. Carrie, I just love and adore you. I think that you have already been such an amazing guest, but it it's about that time in our podcast to take a short little break to sure. make a shout out to a local aligned business that I love so very much. I think that you will too. And when we come back, we're gonna talk more about quarantine and cannabis and self-care. Sounds great. All right, thanks. <laughs> See you soon. Hi, welcome back. Thank you so much. We are here with Carrie Green. Carrie, I have so many questions to ask you. I'm so excited. The first question I have to ask is, how are you doing with the quarantine? Well, um, I, sometimes I feel a little guilty <laughs> for saying this, but I feel really great. 
I'm, um, you know, I feel like it's such an, a wonderful opportunity to uh, expand on my self-care, really up the ante on that. And, um, you know, there's so many different forms and I've been getting out on more uh, nature hikes and out on the beach. Um, so, and uh, really getting um, to have some beautiful time with my, my husband, my partner, Stephen James. Um, and so, yeah, in so many ways, it's been a really wonderful uh, experience and opportunity. And uh, there have been some moments of, of fear or of, uh, of grief or sadness, but I, I think that's all part of it. And I feel that I was really primed for this six years ago when I was recovering from uh, the, the cancer, the chemotherapy. And, um, and that was when I really started to do a, a daily meditation. And um, I'm also doing a practice of uh, Qigong and Tai Chi right now. And my instructor, Glenda Hesseltine with uh, Tai Chi for Everyone is great. So she's a uh, she's wonderful uh, teacher and it's helped keep me grounded, centered, sane, and, uh, and just full of uh, openness and, and love. And uh, I've been able to really relax into the, uh, yeah, just relax in, into everything that's going on. Um, and then cannabis helps too, of course. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about your cannabis microdosing protocol. Um, I, I would love to hear more about that. We didn't get in, we didn't get enough time to speak about it the last time you and I were in person. So, yeah. do you mind sharing with me? Oh no, um, it's can I love cannabis, and it's. Uh, become such a wonderful uh, healing plant in so many ways for me um, over, over time. Uh, Stephen James, my husband, um, he has taught me so much about uh, the plant. And, uh, you know, we have a, a company, Green Spirit Organics. And um, so, he does consultation not only for me but for others and so we uh juice uh in the mornings um with fresh cannabis leaves um if i do, if i don't haven't juiced them then i will uh, macerate them i take fresh frozen and just crumble it right into um the with fresh fruit and uh with um almond milk and uh, just um, uh, fresh mushrooms, or I'm um, sorry, medicinal mushrooms and uh, fresh greens, other fresh greens. So it's just really a powerful way to, to begin the day. And um, it's, you know, it doesn't, because it's not de decarboxylized and, or heated, um, you're getting all the live essence and all of the, all those great nutrients from it. And, uh, and then, you know, um, I may, uh, you know, take a, a capsule if I'm feeling um, like I have a little bit of pain or anything like that, then I might take um, a capsule with fresh uh, live rosin and medicinal mushroom powder um, that uh, Stefan makes. Or, um, or I may take a small uh, um, vapor hit uh, or dab uh, from fresh live rosin that we have from our, our own uh, garden, um, which I'm so grateful for that we can have our own uh, medicinal plants right here in our, in our backyard. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have a couple questions. Sure. One, can you share with us the strain specifics that you are using that you've chose to grow or chosen to grow? And two, can you speak to the fact that maybe um, raw, fresh, compressed, live juice or powdered version, how that is so much different because you hit on decarboxylating 
Can you go a little bit more into that for our audience? Sure. Well, um, so when I was, uh, the, the strain that I believe helped save my life and uh, create the state of health that I'm in now is uh, Harlequin. And um, there's a doctor from uh, the UK that uh, was doing extensive studies with the Harlequin and with cancer patients, uh, particularly for cervical and ovarian cancer. And so I was very fortunate in um, getting, uh, and Stefan, Stefan is my care provider and uh, um, grows the medicine. Um, I, um, I gratefully accept it and <laughs> um, am learning little bits about growing myself. But uh, I, I, I usually am the person that works with the people and he works with the plants. <laughs> so, um, but uh, some of my favorite strains are, are sativa dominance, um, uh, like a, um, oh gosh, uh, like the 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 haze strains um lemon berry haze or um i love the the tangy um stefan grew a beautiful uh version of that um some of the cbd strains that he grew were uh the trident and the um uh acdc um and and the and the harlequin and i really i I really wish that we still had that strain of Harlequin because I think that there's a lot of, of great benefit to that. And one of my current favorites is Forbidden Fruit. I just love mm -hmm. that. So yummy. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I don't mean to interject here, but That's I was okay. lucky enough to have quite a bit gift, gifted to me. So I wrote a couple articles. Oh, uh, yeah on the forbidden fruit and oh it's just lovely uh, very very excited about that one specifically yeah, yeah i love the, the sweeter fruitier strains that way and um so as far as the the live um it's you know any cannabis that is um not uh not heated to a certain temperature um what is that temperature 220 220 220 um so uh, yeah, if it's if it's not up to 220, then it doesn't um, release the um, those those cannabinoids, the THC that is psychoactive that you know will get people high. <laughs> um, and it yes, it reverse, reverses the th uh, THCA to THC. Um, and so those are components of the plant. And so a lot of times people that are first starting out will maybe get a, you know, get a brownie or something like that. And that has been decarboxylated because it's heated above that temperature. And so it releases all of that. And I personally have had some experiences with um, over... I wouldn't say overdosing, but over consuming and uh, and being too high from edibles. So I'm very conscious and careful when it comes to anything that's heated. And if I do get something from the dispensary, um, as far as as an edible or even an oil or anything, I make sure that the um, that the solvent residue is down to a zero ppm because um it's the solvents i think that really create an issue with people um with uh some of the products out there um so yeah i hope that answers your question yes thank you for bringing so many of those things to light you know truly it is about the cannabinoids and the terpene combination for a particular person's body system and what they're trying to heal. Absolutely. So the point of me asking you those questions was to kind of prompt that conversation of helping our audience recognize that if it's not decarbed, decarbed, and it's not um, processed in that way, we can really have a product that does not stimulate any time of shift or change mentally at all 
So there's no altered mood. So that's what I really would like to open that door for our audience and help them recognize they can do it in a very natural, safe, easy way as long as they have the education and we don't have to get altered. Yes, topicals too, Um, you know, salves and uh, and massage oils and, um, you know, the the terpenes, they, you know, when when used topically, just huge, huge benefits without any kind of um, mind altering effects. So, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. I love that you juice. I, you know, people know my story, but I was juicing for close to a year when I had my cancer scare. It was absolutely beneficial, obviously, and it was the only thing I could do because at that time, five or six years ago, you know, um, the THC was in all of the products and anything that we could get locally, (laughs) so we didn't even quite know about Mm -hmm. CBD yet, and we didn't know about juicing, but we've come leaps and bounds in just six years. Can you believe it? I know, definitely. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited and and happy that we, you know, and I think with recreational, it's also taken some of the the stigma out of it so that people are more willing to, to try, um, you know, over, over some of the pharmaceutical, uh, drugs. Um, that's one thing I, you know, even though I was given prescriptions and things like that, I chose not to go that route because I, I really try to keep, uh, um, you know, clean, pure substances in my body as much as possible. Well, it definitely shows because you are a beautiful, radiant, lovely woman. And I am so grateful to have you as a friend and have you on the show today. Um, It's getting about that time in our show where I'm going to have to let you go. But before I do that, can I ask you to share with us either some type of mantra or affirmation or maybe a healing card or something you want to share with the audience that kind of encompasses our hour together today or your message for the show? Yes. Well, I, you know, I was going through some, some quotes and uh, I feel like, you know, um, even though I'm, I'm doing well and thriving um, at this time, maybe a lot of people aren't. And so this this quote came back to me and i just wanted to um uh thank you and um and invite uh people to um check out spirals at spiralsinstitute.com my website uh and i've I've been in the process of creating a massage therapy school. um, And so there's some information about that there. And I'm going to be uh, putting some about my my cancer protocols and things like that. And so, um, yeah, I just want to leave you with uh, with this quote. When you can't control what's happening, challenge yourself to control that the way you are responding to what's happening. That's where the power is. Oh, Carrie, that is like the golden nugget right there. Thank you so much. I love and adore you so much. You are such a strong, powerful woman, and I'm really grateful to have known you and to continue to see you grow. Well, thank you so much for having me. Oh, love you, Pepper. Thank you. you. Thank you so much for making time to be with us today. I know you're a very busy person and you are here on the show to help encourage others to get one step closer to their highest aligned self, the mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional bodies, of course, and to the audience. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Dr. Pepper Hernandez. Let's make this the best year ever. Absolutely. Thank you.